Good morning, everyone. This is Wednesday morning. It's hunt day, as it's commonly known to us. And uh, it also is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice, and we will be glad in it. Amen. And there's another scripture that um, our congregation here in Puxico hears me quote quite often that I haven't been able to use much lately. And... Um, and that scripture is the one that says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And uh, I'm looking forward to the day that I get to use that scripture again because we've been shut out from the house of God for many weeks now. Uh, but God has not been shut out of our lives and God is still working. God is still moving. And um, I believe the day is coming close now that we will be able, at least in this area, to return uh, to the church, of course, with some limitations, but a much better situation than, than what we're experiencing right now. But what I'm excited about is taking the things that we've learned during this time and applying them and, um, and using them to our benefit as we go forward because we're going to be a much better rounded, well-rounded church and group of believers um, after we come through this storm than we were going in. And I know that each and every one of you signing on this morning agree with that and believe that with me. God bless you this morning, Brenda and Pam and Carmen and Jennifer, uh, the first ones to sign on here this morning. And uh, we're looking forward to great things in the Lord today. I see you greeting each, each other. And uh, we can just have a little virtual aisle fellowship as we get started here this morning. And that will be just fine. So God bless you today for joining us. I have some praise reports to share with you this morning. Happy to do that. Uh, Christy Ray has sent in a praise report. Uh, her parents are some that were diagnosed with COVID-19. And we've been praying for them for, I guess, about a week now, maybe a little longer. Um, her parents said they are feeling very good. Her dad is being released and will be able to go back to work. And her mother goes back to the doctor on Monday, but she is finally feeling like herself again. So we praise God for those uh, coronavirus recoveries, and we give God the praise and the glory for that. Uh, Carmen sends in a couple of praise reports for us this morning. Brother Robert Hamby came through his open heart surgery yesterday. He's doing well. Um, and also Rachel's tests came back negative for coronavirus. So we thank the Lord for all that he's doing. Amen. And God is ready to move today in our petitions as we get ready to take these needs to the Lord. We want to remember in prayer today, Wayne Spencer is having open heart surgery today. Ashley Haga just had gallbladder surgery and she's needing a speedy recovery from that. Uh, Leanne Rommel had neck surgery in February and this was a new request for us yesterday. Uh, she's been having a difficult time recovering from that, so she needs strength and healing this morning. Uh, Sister Karen Pratt requests prayer for a former pastor in Haines City, Florida, in the hospital with coronavirus, and his wife is also showing symptoms. Their names are James and Irma Campbell. So we want to remember the Campbells this morning in our prayers. And while we're praying for these affected by coronavirus, I want to give you an update on Brother Eli Hernandez. Uh, they have just about weaned him completely from the heavy sedation. Uh, he's still in a comatose state. That's not unusual when someone's been under heavy sedation for a while. I had a friend who, who was um, comatose after coming off sedation for several days um, after having open heart surgery and complications from that. Um, so that's not unusual, but he is almost out from under all that sedation and his blood pressure is staying within good range. The fluid in his lungs is lessening. And so we praise God for his strength and his help on this long road of recovery for Brother Hernandez. We want to remember our New York uh, Metro District churches today, and in fact, just that area that's been, I guess, the hardest hit of anywhere uh, in the United States. We want to remember New York today. Uh, Carmen's friend Jessica, the Trimble family, I haven't heard an update on them in a while, but I'm assuming that no news there is good news. Uh, my Aunt Faye's friend, we want to continue to pray 
um, for her as well or for, or for that situation as well. Uh, Tasha Ray is needing a job. So we'll continue to pray for her and for Ashley Burks, who is asking us to pray for her and her family. Tara and Jana ask for continued prayers for essential workers, and Jana also has an unspoken need that we're praying about. Uh, this morning we have several that are in need of miraculous recovery from cancer, and we know that we serve the miracle worker. Uh, Beverly has stage 3 breast cancer, Diane Escher, uh, battling liver cancer, uh, Delbert Bryant, stage four lung cancer, Michael Bolin, stage four lung cancer, uh, Caden is battling cancer, and our dear brother Steve Williford has early stage prostate cancer, and we're going to pray against cancer today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we know that our God does all things well. Amen. We want to continue to pray for Lori's daughter, Kaylee and for her son Ben and we have so many that turn in requests for their children and I know that God is going to honor the prayers of these parents today. Uh, let's keep praying for Pam Pulliam's children also for her parents. Uh, Marsha Moore asking prayer again for her prodigal children for healing for her daughter Brittany and for her son-in-law Victor. Uh, we need to keep praying for Randy and Sandy Anders and for Paula Storms she needs peace and comfort as she grieves the loss of her husband. Jennifer's cousin, Jamie, uh, has had a loss in her family as well. So we want to keep praying for her today. Uh, the Lord is our comforter. Amen. And I feel his spirit, just his abiding presence. Amen. Here this morning with us. And we're going to trust him for all of our needs. Uh, Debbie desires continued prayer for her daughters, for their relationship with one another, that they would reconcile. Um, we want to keep praying for Carmen's daughter, Grace. Uh, she has many needs today in her life, and we just want to pray for godly influence in her life and for some barriers in her life to be broken down. Amen. And we want to pray for my, my dad and for my mother-in-law, that's Ron Bryant, Beulah Ziegler, both in need of miraculous deliverance from Parkinson's disease. Ruth Richards needs our prayers this morning. Um, seeing her need of God, and we know that God is dealing with hearts during this time. Mark Willer's mother, he told me last night she's still in the hospital and needs our prayers this morning. And um, then the last request I had turned in is for Shelby, um, a young lady who is struggling with bipolar disorder. And we need to remember all those that uh, suffer from mental health issues um, in times of crisis like this, where there's so much negativity, uh, it's just really even more difficult and exacerbates those problems that already exist. Amen. We know that God is our healer, and uh, he's a healer of every kind of disease, every kind of disorder, and he is able this morning, and we're going to place our trust in him for all of these needs. Amen. I see that several have joined us as I've been doing our request, and we welcome you this morning, um, Jennifer. I think I already, already mentioned you, but uh, Jonathan is watching this morning, uh, Penny with us this morning, Beulah and Brenda, and Brenda sends in a praise report that Randy came home on Saturday and is doing good, so thank the Lord for his touch upon that situation. Uh, Judy and Michael are with us this morning, and my cousin Twyla, God bless you, Marsha, Ben, and um, Bethany. Good to see you this morning, Bethany, and Brother Mike, God bless you. We just have such a great uh, group here, and I may have already mentioned some of you here, but um, if not, it's good to see Sister Pam with us today. I think I might have already mentioned her. And as we go along here, I appreciate uh, your connectedness to one another, and there's strength in numbers. We know that, but there's even greater strength in unity, and right now we're beginning our prayer time today, our devotion time, 17 strong, and um, we're getting stronger every time that we come together in prayer. This week we've been studying the Bible story recorded in uh, 2 Kings chapter 4, the story of the Shunammite woman who obtained this very notable miracle of her son being raised from the dead. Yesterday we went back to the very beginning of the story and, and started working our way through it to determine 
what events in her life prior to that tragic death of her son uh, might have best positioned her to be able to receive such a miraculous intervention of God. And we didn't have to go far to discover something that proved to be a key to the miraculous in her life, and it will prove to be key to the miraculous in our lives as well. She determined that she would make a little chamber or a little room for the prophet Elisha to stay whenever he passed through uh, Shunem. In other words, if we would apply that to ourselves, um, it would be the, the making of space or giving God room in our lives to work, dedicating time, dedicating ourselves to uh, spiritual things. We learned yesterday that if you want the miraculous to operate in your life, you must first make room for God. This is a principle that we must uh, grasp and we must implement in our lives. Now, we've been focusing on the miracle that she received at the end of the story when her son was raised from the dead. But that was not the only miracle in this story. The fact that she even had a son to begin with was a miracle in and of itself. And this miracle happened as a direct result of her making room for God to work in her life. She literally built a room for God in her life. At some point, after she and her husband had built this room onto their house for the man of God, the Bible tells us in verse 11 that it fell on a day that the prophet came there and he turned into the chamber um, to rest. And he said to his servant Gehazi, he said, call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him and he said, now I want you to say to her, behold, you have been careful for us with all this care. What can we do for you or what is to be done for thee? Would you be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. In other words, I really don't, uh, I really don't need anything, which was not true. But, you know, sometimes we have deep needs that we've kind of already given up on. And we, we don't, when we have opportunity, we don't even mention those because there, there are things that we have no confidence about. And so um, he said, well, what's to be done for her then? And Gehazi had been observant. And he answered and says, she has no child and her husband is old. And he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And verse 15 or 16 says, and he said, about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. Now I want you to notice this, the next verse or next part of the verse. And she said, nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine handmaiden. The next verse says, And the woman conceived and bare a son at the season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. Now I'm fixing to show you something here because we place, place such a premium on faith in the sense of active, how well am I believing in this moment? We talked about the, the man with the lunatic son who, who uh, Jesus said, if you can believe, then this can happen. He said, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. We talked a few days ago about the fact that doubt and, and faith actually coexist. We think if we have any doubt that we're disqualified from the miraculous, that's not true because doubt is just the inverse of faith. It's just faith in the negative. It's just believing in the wrong thing as we talked about uh, last week. All right, I'm getting excited here this morning, but I'm trying to point out something to you right here. I wish somebody could show me in this passage of Scripture how that this woman's great faith warranted her receiving a miracle. Please show me that because what I read is not a statement of faith. I know that faith was present somewhere down in the cobwebby corners of her heart. I know it was there, but her response to the man of God was not a response of faith. When he said about this season, uh, according to the time of life, you're going to embrace a son her response was, no, my Lord, you're a man of God. Don't lie to me. If you look that up in Marty's Backwoods Bible Dictionary, uh, what she actually said was, liar, liar, pants on fire. Now, as a preacher, I wouldn't be very, I'm not very excited or, or happy when I tell someone a word from the Lord and they tell me I'm a liar. That would, that would probably be very offensive to me. And I'm sure that would be to you as well. 
So that was doubt talking. That was not faith talking when she actually contradicted the statement, uh, prophetic statement of the man of God. But the very next verse, there was no upbraidment. There was no chastisement. The very next verse tells us that she received that miracle. And so my question to you is on what basis did she receive that miracle? It certainly wasn't on her active faith in the moment. Well, if you skip back to verse 13, you will find that the basis for the miracle was the room that she had built. She received the miracle not because of her faith as it relates to the current active belief that God is going to act, but she received it because of her faithfulness. Elisha approached it as simply returning a favor. You know, I think too often we look at faith as just a state of mind that we can whip ourselves into where we get ourselves on such a high plane that all of our doubts are erased and suddenly in one euphoric moment we have that perfect combination that God likes and whammo, our needs are met. Unfortunately, that kind of faith strategy gives rise to the misconception that you can do your own thing devoid of the plan of God and then when a need arises, you can start building your faith from scratch and you can try to press your way through and elevate yourself above all your doubts until you somehow get yourself back to that high point, that euphoric pinnacle of faith. And then once your need is met, you can go back to doing your own thing again. And then the next time you have a problem, you just have to go through the whole process again. But the issue with that ill-advised strategy is that it becomes increasingly more and more difficult to make that trek all the way to the summit of Faith Mountain each and every time you find yourself in a pickle. But would you allow me to convince you this morning from the Word of God that there is a much more sound faith strategy that you can utilize? It is a strategy that is better than faith itself. It's living your life every day every day in harmony with what you believe and hold dear. It's called faithfulness, and it brings divine favor upon your life. I told you last Friday, I believe it was, that I was going to talk to you about something this week that's even better than faith, and here it is. If you have ears to hear, then hear this. Faithfulness is better than faith. That's why James said, Show me your faith without your works. And I will show you my faith by my works, James 2, 18. In other words, you can keep trying to convince yourself and others that, that you really believe, even though there may be zero evidence to support your words, but wouldn't it be much better to just go ahead and put forth the effort to build a room in your life for the things of God? Wouldn't it be much better to commit to living a life of faithfulness every day than to have to always be finding a way to rise to the occasion Minus the infrastructure that pleases God and brings his favor upon you, upon you. You see, you will invariably find that as you live a life of faithfulness to God, it will bring God's favor upon your life. And with the awareness of God's favor, that's where our confidence comes. And hence, you begin to build a strong foundation for your faith. Not your faithfulness. That's not what we're trusting in but the realization that God's favor is upon you, that God really is looking out for you, that God really does desire to bless you. That realization, it will carry you. I can testify to this. It will carry you through the darkest hours of your life. In the midst of his trial at a time when he was caught up in the struggle of faith and doubt, Job said in Job 23, 10, he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. That's the part that we quote all the time. But he continued in the next verse and said this, My foot hath held his steps. His ways have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. In another place, I remember Job saying, and I have said this many times in my life when I didn't know what else to do. And he said, I have maintained my way, or I will maintain my way before the Lord. And I'm paraphrasing that scripture, but I found there's times in my life that, that I couldn't control anything except I could maintain my way before the Lord. And if I could keep that room cleaned and I could keep that room uh, maintained, 
Amen. I had confidence uh, that when I, my faith was weak, uh, I had a room. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow, about how she took that child, her child, and took him to the room when it seemed that all hope was lost. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost here this morning. Praise God. Amen. Job knew the reason God's favor was upon him and because of his faithfulness uh, to God. And he had maintained a place for him. Uh, there was that confidence before his trial, that hedge of blessing that was around him. It was there because of Job's faithfulness. And so when Job's back was against the wall, he was able to lift his head and say, I am going to make it. I, I was faithful before this happened, and I can still be faithful now, and I'll be faithful after this happened. And because of that, because of his favor on my life, and because I purposed in my heart to remain faithful to him now, then I still have his favor and everything's going to be all right. Amen. I want to tell you this morning, prayer team, great things God is doing and God is going to do with the room that we are building right now. When this current crisis has passed, if we will maintain this commitment, this room that we have built, maybe this Morning prayer gathering is, a, is just a part of that. I mean, it shouldn't be the only time that you pray. I think I tell you that often. But it's something that we're building for God, for the glory of God, that he could work in our lives and our situations. And we need to maintain this prayer time. We need to maintain our prayer lives in uh, every situation and not just during the crisis. Amen. And we're going to see God move because of the room that we built. So if you are struggling with your faith today, and as we go to prayer together, hey, have confidence in God because God honors the room that we have, have, are building together. God honors faithfulness, and he's going to move in our needs this morning. Let's pray together right now and ask God to move in our needs. Let's enter his gates with thanksgiving, and let's come into his courts today with praise. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, there's no name like your name. Your name is exalted above every other name. All power in heaven and earth is given into the name of Jesus Christ. And we glorify your name. And we ask you today, Lord, to glorify your name among your people. God, by moving in every need and in every situation that we entrust you with today, God. We know that you're a faithful God and we've determined to be a faithful people, Lord, that we might receive your favor and your blessing because we understand that you are our source, our source of strength, our source of hope, our source of peace, our source of deliverance, our source of salvation. Everything that we need is in you. And so we glorify your great name, your holy and your righteous name. And we give you honor and praise and glory. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for being with us every day in this prayer time. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in our families. We thank you, God, for everything that's being done behind the scenes, the things that we are not even yet aware of. But God, as these praise reports begin to come in day after day, and there's names that we're able to take off of our prayer list. Oh, God, our hearts just swell with admiration and with thankfulness, Lord, unto you for what you are doing among us. And it gives me confidence, God, increased confidence, of, hallelujah, of what you're going to do because you're no respecter of persons. Let's just praise him, hallelujah. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for all that you're doing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We come to you, God, praying for your will in so many situations. We're praying your kingdom come because we know in your kingdom, Lord, there's healing and there's deliverance. Hallelujah. So we bring these needs to you today. We pray for Brother Wayne Spencer today as he's going through open heart surgery. Even as you brought Brother Hamby through his procedure yesterday, God, and he's doing well. We trust you, Lord, with Brother Spencer today. Hallelujah. Guide those surgeons today, God. We pray for Ashley today, God, who just had gallbladder surgery. We pray, God, for a quick recovery for her. We pray for Leanne Rommel, who's struggling in recovery from neck surgery. God, touch her today. 
I speak to the pain that's in her neck right now and in her body. In the name of Jesus, I command you to depart from her body right now. Receive healing right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. By the authority of the word of God, we ask these things. Hallelujah. By the power of the name of Jesus and by the blood that was shed for us, the stripes that were taken for our healing. Hallelujah. We claim these promises today, these promises of the word of God. We pray today for this former pastor in Haines City and his wife, James and Irma. God, we pray that you would touch them, Lord, right now as they're battling coronavirus. In the name of Jesus, we speak healing to them. Hallelujah. We pray, God, for Brother Hernandez. We believe you, God, for complete recovery. We thank you for touching him and keeping him today. We pray, God, that he would come out of that coma, Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, that he would be able to speak to his family again, God. Hallelujah. We thank you for the progress that's been made there. We pray, Lord, for our New York district churches and for that entire region, God. We thank you that the infection rate is dropping, that the hospitalization and death rate is dropping, God. We give you the glory and the praise, and we pray that you would continue to work in that situation in New York today and in all of our urban areas, God, that are so hard hit. We pray for your help today, and we trust in you. We pray, Lord, for Carmen's friend Jessica, for the Trimble family. For my aunt's friend, Lord, got all of these battling coronavirus today. We believe you for complete recovery of health in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, for our economy today, for job situations of which Tasha is represented today, God. She needs you to move in her job and so many others, Lord, laid off right now and unable to find work. We pray, God, for a turnaround in our economy. You are the one that holds the answer to all things, and we believe you, God, to move in our economic situations today. We pray, Lord, for Ashley Burks today and her family. We lift them up, God, that whatever their needs are, that they'll be supplied, whether they be spiritual, emotional, physical, Lord, whatever that they are today, God, we pray that you would move on their behalf. We pray, Lord, for all of the essential workers that are on the front lines today. God, that you would help them, that you would strengthen them, and Lord, that you would protect them in Jesus' name. We pray for Jana's unspoken request. Every unspoken need today, God, you know all about it. You know the hidden things of the heart. And we trust you, God, with these needs today that we don't even want to mention publicly, God, but you have them in the palm of your hand and you have us there today, God. We pray for miraculous recovery from cancer right now. I rebuke cancer today in the name of Jesus uh, on behalf of little Caden, on behalf of Beverly and Diane and Delbert and Michael and Brother Steve Williford. Uh, we rebuke cancer in the name of Jesus. Release your hold right now. Hallelujah. Die, cancer cells, uh, that these people might live uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh God, we pray in your authority today day. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And we believe you, God, for the answer to come. In Jesus' name, we pray, Lord, for all of the lost children, all of the backsliders in our families, God. We pray for Pam's children and for Marcia's children today. In Jesus' name, we pray for Debbie's children today, God, her daughters. We pray, Lord, for Carmen's daughter, Grace, today. You see her needs, oh God. We pray that you would move in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, for Brittany and Victor for healing right now. We pray, Lord, for Brother and Sister Perkins, God, for healing in their bodies in Jesus' name. We curse that shingles infection right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Dry up in Jesus' name. Receive healing, Brother Perkins, in Jesus' name. We thank you, God. We pray for my father and for my mother-in-law, Ron and Beulah, Lord, for deliverance from Parkinson's disease this morning. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that not only the symptoms would dissipate, but God, the very source of the problem today, that it would be plucked up from their roots and taken out of their body. In Jesus' name, we pray for Ruth, God, for her need of you today. 
hallelujah, for salvation and deliverance uh, and whatever that she needs, God. We pray for Mark's mother in the hospital today, for Benita Copeland in the hospital today, God. Touch them, minister to them. Lord, minister health to them today and a turnaround in their condition. We give you praise in Jesus' name. We ask you, Lord, for Paula today, for peace and comfort as she grieves the loss of her dear husband. We pray for Jamie, Lord, as she deals with the loss in her family this morning. We pray, God, for Randy and Sandy today. We thank you for the report for, for Randy, God, and we pray your continued touch in that situation. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray for Lori's daughter, Kaylee, and for her son, Ben. Hallelujah, Lord, if there's any needs that I've missed today, God, uh, Lord, help us to remember them throughout the day and to lift them up in prayer as we go forward in this day. God, I pray for Shelby, Lord, and for all those that are struggling with bipolar disorder and different uh, mental health issues today, God. Lord, during this crisis, these things that have been exacerbated, we pray your help, that your peace would flow. God, that the moods would begin to stabilize right now. In the name of Jesus, and those mood swings, God, would, would begin to, to come under control right now. Hallelujah. We bring it all under your name today. All things are subject to your name and your authority. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. And we give you glory and praise. We pray for every pastor and every church. God, for great revival in the midst of ruin today. We believe you, God, for revival, Lord, in this time. That this will not be remembered as the age of COVID, but it would be remembered as the age of end time revival. We give you all glory and praise. Come on, prayer warriors. Let's just finish our prayer and exalt him and praise him by faith for answering our prayers. We give you praise, Lord, for every need answered today. We know, God, that you're faithful to hear our request, and we feel your presence with us here today, and we thank you for hearing our prayers. This is your kingdom. It's not about us. It's about you. It's your power. It's not by might or by power, but by your spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. It's your glory, and be glorified today in your church, in your people, and we thank you, and we praise you for these things in Jesus' name. God bless you this morning. Thank you so much for joining us today for morning prayer and devotion. I'm looking forward to Thursday morning. Um, from this moment forward, I'll be looking forward to it, praying with you and, um, and talking about this miracle of this widow who, or this lady who had her uh, son raised back to life again in 2 Kings chapter 4. I believe we'll be concluding this devotion tomorrow with the most powerful portion of it. So don't miss it. Amen. Hit the share icon. Start a watch party this morning, and let's spread it far and wide and invite someone to join us for devotion tomorrow morning. Until then, God bless you in Jesus' name, and I will see you at 730 on Thursday morning.